Oracle's hiring, there is pushback on the practice of using credit checks during the hiring process, and smartphone users are jumping to the iPhone. I'm Mark Pfeffer, and this is the Dice News Update for October 11th, 2011. Oracle says that it's aggressively hiring. There's a lot going on at the company. First of all, it's continuing its push into hardware despite the weak economy. Then, during its latest quarter, the company saw 14% growth in adjusted earnings per share. And last week at Oracle Open World, CEO Larry Ellison showed off the company's public cloud platform. That offers applications including financial programs, human capital management, and customer relations management. Meantime, another story from the job world. Engineering salaries are on the rise. They're increasing despite the weak economy and a higher than average unemployment rate in the sector. The IEEE USA says that median income for all engineers rose from $113,500 in 2009 to $118,000 in 2010. That's about a 4% increase. For software engineers, the median salary grew from $104,000 in 2009 to $109,000 last year. That's a 4.8% increase. A number of companies check their job candidates' credit histories before they make an offer. That seems kind of unpleasant about now when the economy is firing on something like one cylinder, but now there's some pushback against the practice. A coalition of civil rights and advocacy groups have petitioned TransUnion, which is one of the big three consumer credit services, to stop selling information to employers. They say using credit histories to screen applicants can trap the jobless and disproportionately burden black and Latino candidates. So they want TransUnion and the other big three, that would be Equifax and Experian, to stop making the credit reports available. They're focusing on TransUnion because it's privately held and thus won't have to face stockholders once it makes its decision. Of course, not having stockholders is something that can cut both ways. The Society for Human Resources Management, which, by the way, likes the practice, says about 60% of businesses use credit histories when they're making their hiring decisions. These businesses say that they're most likely to check credit for candidates whose work will involve financial tasks and financial decisions. But meantime, seven states, most recently California, have somehow restricted the practice. Finally, though the iPhone 4S has been racking up all kinds of records since it hit stores last week, other smartphone makers may want to pay attention to this little nugget. A lot of buyers are walking away from Android's Blackberries and Nokia in favor of the iPhones. Reuters conducted an informal poll, and a small one, and it found just shy of a quarter of customers were moving to Apple from something else. It's not a definitive account by any means, but it's probably a number that's worth paying attention to. The numbers could be especially worrisome for RIM. Its outage last week could have been more perfectly timed to push customers considering making a move over the edge. And as for Nokia, one customer said that the company seems to have lost its way in terms of interface and other features, and that's why he was moving. There is a little bit of comfort for RIM. In another informal and small poll, The Guardian said that a third of the people who were buying the 4S at an Apple store in London said that they would have bought a BlackBerry if the iPhone didn't exist, which it does. So anyway, also unfortunately for Rim, under the same circumstances, more than half of those customers said they'd have bought an Android. Cat Miller's going to be back tomorrow with another edition of Dice TV. For me, that's it until next week. So I'm Mark Pfeffer, the senior editor of the Dice Blog Network, and we now return you to your regular desktop.